Hey guys, thank you for joining me today. Um, I'm here to t here to talk to the about daring to be dangerous. Um, when I say dangerous, let me get this out of the way first. When I say dangerous, I don't mean physically dangerous. I don't mean punching people or or emotionally dangerous or intimidating. I don't mean anything like that. When I say dangerous, I mean um, spiritually dangerous, dangerous for the kingdom. Um, I think that many times we're just too timid and, and stuff like that, me included. Um, the Lord was dealing with me about, he said, um, a few months ago, I, I saw the sermon about asking questions and how, how God isn't afraid of your questions. And then, um, and then he said, he, the Lord revealed to me after that we were we were talking. I should explain my um, relationship with God so that you understand. So when I when I go uh, slash stream church on Sunday, I usually listen to the sermon. And then when I, before I talk to anyone else about um, this, about what I heard or my takeaways, I go to God and I talk to him about it. So when I heard this um, preacher talk about asking questions and how, how God is not the right by questions and how questions are important and all that stuff. Um, the Lord, um, when I was talking to him after that sermon, he said, he said to, to me, he said, but pe people are asking questions, but not dangerous questions. I said, dangerous questions? What the heck do you mean by dangerous questions? Um, he said, questions are just asking, they're to acquire knowledge. But dangerous questions change atmospheres and the world. And so, for an for example, um, you could say why is why did coronavirus come to us? Uh, what um, and that question will give you knowledge, but for now it won't change anything unless you are a medical scientist or whatever. Um, dangerous questions also depend on who is asking, asking. If you're just an ordinary uh, Joe Small person asking why did coronavirus uh, come to the whole world? Um, why did coronavirus come at all? Um, it's a question to acquire knowledge, but not a dangerous question. It's not to change the world. But if you were asking that question and you were a medical researcher researching, uh, uh, if you were part of um, the WHO, the World Health Organization, not the band, <laughs> the World Health Organization, 
and you were asking why did coronavirus come to the world? Um, now, that would be a dangerous question because the answer would change the um, world and the atmosphere and you could do uh, something about it. Um, and back to what I was saying, uh, when I said, um, he said, um, the Lord talks to me about asking a dangerous question. And he said, dangerous questions shift atmospheres, uh, physically, could be physically, spiritually, emotionally, they do. So, he said, the world is asking questions, but they're not dangerous questions. They don't shift atmospheres. So, a dangerous question for a pastor would not be, oh, why does this pandemic happen? That would, that would acquire knowledge or whatever. You can look that up on Google to, to research pandemics and why did it happen. A dangerous question, however, would be, what is this pandemic designed to change about the church I lead, the people I lead? What is it designed to shift? In our, in our church's atmosphere? That's a dangerous question because it will change the, the possibly the structure of the church. Um, it'll shift things. It'll bring things into focus that we've ignored. It will, it will bring about change. It will do certain things. So, um, the Lord said um, to everyone, he said, it's not only time to ask uh, questions, it's time to ask dangerous questions. Questions that shift the atmosphere. Questions that really cause the Lord to move. No, questions that the answers cause God to move. Questions that will bring about revelation, not just frustration and uh, fruitless worry. He loves getting your questions. He knows what's on your mind, he knows what's on your heart, and he loves sharing with you, and he loves um, when you ask questions, but he's longing for the, for the church and the body of Christ uh, to ask dangerous questions, specific questions. When I think of the tabernacle and how specific he was. Oh my God, reading that thing would put you, would make your head spin. It was, he liked the kind of wood and stuff like that. He was so specific. When he told Noah to build the ark, he was really specific there too. And he says, it's time for the world, for the, um, for the church and the world to be dangerous. And he gave me this title, he said, Dare to be Dangerous. And he gave me these four points. He said, Dare to pray dangerous prayers, dare to have dangerous praise, dare to do dangerous worship, dare to have dangerous joy, and dare to have dangerous love. Now, praying dangerous prayers are the prayers that will 
cause atmospheres to shift and change. They are not prayers in panic, like, oh God, what could I do? Those are those kind of prayers. And God will accept any kind of prayers that you want to pray. He'll he'll accept the help me Lord. He'll accept, oh, I have this bill I don't know what to do with. He loves those kind of prayers. He loves them with all your heart. But dangerous prayers are prayers that actually shift and move the atmosphere. And, and he says, um, the church needs to rise and start praying dangerous prayers. And prayers don't give permission for God to move. The earth is his. What prayers do is they, they, dangerous prayers shift the atmosphere and allow God's glory to come in the situation and allow God's wisdom to come in the situation. The Lord the gentleman. He will not go where he's not wanted. So that's what prayers do. Um, prayers actually give the Lord the okay to move in a situation. It's like if you're if you're a guy with a girl on a date. Um, it's like some girls love guys to be shivel rest and open the door for her. Some girls think it's selfish, uh, think it's like, uh, uh, a, a violation of their rights as a woman. They tend to think that the man thinks that she's helpless. So what what happens is basically when a guy asks, would you want me to open the door for you? And the girl gives her permission. It gives him permission to do it. Um, or maybe that's a bad example because girls like the words being open. So, so sometimes having a disability, sometimes I need help with certain things. And sometimes it just takes me time to do certain things. And I just, but I still want to do it on my own. So I like people to ask. Do you want me to help you with that, or can you do it yourself, or whatever? Not just assume that I need help because I'm in a wheelchair and whatever. So that's the same with prayers. So the Lord knows you need help, but prayers give him the access to help you because he believes in free will. And he will not infringe on on your free will to just do what you want to what I uh, what he feels that uh, you you need to have done in your life. Sometimes, in some circumstances, he will. There are always exceptions to the rule, but usually he will not infringe on your um, space and answer something that you haven't prayed about. But there's always exceptions, because I remember a few times where God has um, answered prayers that I didn't even know I prayed, but in my mind, thinking back, I did pray them, but just not consciously. So he wants the church to rise and start praying dangerous prayers. 
and dangerous worship. Let's talk about dangerous worship. Dangerous worship is not the just, I love you, Lord. I thank you for what you've done. That's that's worship. But it is really crying out to God, giving your whole self, no holes barred, being totally naked before the Lord and saying, here I am. And, um, and uh, that kind of worship uh, is, it creates, um, it, it creates purpose in your life. So that kind of totally naked, no holes barred, uh, dangerous worship uh, creates um, cr- creates room for God to come in and um, pl- plant his seed in you and it grows. That, okay, one day I'm going to do a sermon on spiritual sexuality, but when, okay, but here's a little snippet. We are the church. Uh, when I'm, when I'm, um, we are supposed to, be, um, supposed to be like God and the church. And marriage is a picture of Christ in the church. And sexual intimacy between a man and his wife in order to create life you have to um, the parts that you don't show to anyone else the parts that remain covered um, to everyone else those are the parts that create life when they come together so in worship, so so the the semen merges with the egg to create life. So in dangerous worship, a part of you merges with the part of God to create something new, to germinate, to bring forth life. And that's what dangerous worship does. And I think that the church has not understood worship properly. We think it's like just music and, oh, I love you, Lord, and whatever. That is, that is kind of like a kiss on a date or a compliment. That is not going, um... Anywhere, you know, that is not going anywhere. Um, and that is not creating anything. It's like um, on a date, we're like you're on a date and you're and you give like one kiss or a few kisses. It feels nice, but doesn't really create anything. Like it. it it gives you the tingles, it gives you the butterflies, it makes you want to, uh, it gives you the expectation of something more, but it doesn't create, and, and like, it doesn't create anything beyond that. A kiss can't get you pregnant. And could it be why you're not feeling creative for a why your worship is not a weapon, it's just a feel good. Could it be that it's not dangerous worship? It's just uh, kiss worthy worship. It's not creative, it's just kiss worthy. And that's why I find it so disheartening in church that when we're, when things are 
getting heated up, we just stop and like go on with our schedule. Uh, we need to interrupt our schedule because that is there is something that God wants to do. There is something that God wants to say. There is something that He wants to bring forth. But our church schedule or our life schedule is getting in His way. And remember, I said God will not infringe on your faith. You have to uh, let Him in. And we say we want to let Him in, but I. I've said this before, I think we're scared to do it because we, we are just like, oh no, what's going to happen? It kind of reminds me of this movie called Two Can Play That Game. Um, there's a scene in, in the movie and uh, if you have kids in the room, just get them out and co or cover their ears because... This is kind of not an adult, this is kind of an adult scene. Anyway, Vivica Fox, who is the main character telling the stories of uh, the games women play with men, uh, she comes over to this guy's house. And she comes over, you know, dressed in her tight outfit or whatever, she's ready to uh, get get down. And like, you know, um, uh, okay, they start making out, getting hot and heavy and whatever, and she says, oh, I gotta go, I'm sorry, uh, will you respect me in the morning and you have me an hour or something? He's like, no, it's not good for me. And then she runs out of the man's apartment, leaving him just bereft. Uh, and, and just totally, uh, just totally um, kind of wanting. And I think that's what we do to God every Sunday. We, like, <laughs> we, like, don't, uh, finish <laughs> what we've started. So I, I think we need to break our schedule and invite uh, him him into like a really sacred worship space. And when we do that, things will change, things will move. And I'm going to uh talk about dangerous joy. Uh, dangerous joy is the kind of infectious joy that when you walk into the room, when you're around that person, your attitude shifts. You could be having the worst day ever. And then that person, you come in contact with that person, you get a text from that person, and your whole day just changes because of what they carry and because of the joy emanating from them. And you will say, I don't know what it is about you, but something about you totally uh just makes me smile or whatever. And uh and he's calling for people to have dangerous joy today. To have the kind of joy that circumstances, whatever's going on, can't move. To have the kind of joy that when you walk into a room, it's just infectious. You don't have to say anything. All you have to do is walk into a room and the spirit of the room lifts. And, and that's what 
that's what dangerous joy is. And he says for that point, he said he's giving back the joy that you've been missing. He's replacing your depression with joy. He's depl- He's replacing your confusion with joy. He's just uh, going to give you joy today, dangerous joy, the joy that will change atmospheres, the joy that will change your company, the joy that will change your life. Joy, joy can not only change atmospheres, but it can restore hope. And dangerous hope is the hope that uh, above all odds, you know in your spirit that it will happen. Um, That's actually dangerous faith. Uh, Dangerous hope is that you keep, keep on hoping despite everything and dangerous hope can uh, turn into dangerous faith that you just believe despite everything that is going on that what God said he will do and the Lord is saying that your dangerous hope and your dangerous faith is working together for your good. And then, oh, like people have lost hope and faith. They, they've lost their hope that it will get better, and they've lost their faith that it is getting better. And he's saying he's restoring, not just giving you hope and faith, but giving you dangerous hope and dangerous faith that like despite any anything that is going on it will come to pass it will come to pass um and then the last point is dangerous love dangerous love is the love that transforms life that can restore anything. The dangerous love is the love of Jesus. And it's kind of reminds me of, of the song uh, Reckless Love. And I saw somebody on some site saying, how can God's love be reckless? Because it's, and they said, is it right for us to call God's love reckless? Uh, What this person doesn't understand is that it is reckless. Reckless love, the reckless love of God is kind of stupid love. It's the love past understanding. It's the, it's the love that loves when your son is on drugs. It's the love that keeps on going back despite anything. And that's the kind of love that God has for us. And he wants us to love people like that. Loving people doesn't always mean you let them into your life. It means that despite everything, that you just embrace them. Love doesn't mean acceptance of everything the person does. Love means that despite everything, you embrace them. You, despite the fact you don't understand, you embrace them. And, and you show them that they're still a person, although that you don't, you don't agree or you don't understand. You don't have to understand a person's life to love them. 
you just have to know that they're a child of God. And the Lord wants the church to embrace that dangerous love. I think if we were to embrace that dangerous love, I'm sensing people would flock to the church. Uh, people would run to the church because that dangerous love says, despite who, no matter who you are, despite where you've been, whether you're straight, whether you're gay, whether you're black, whether you're white, whether you don't know what you are, whether you're trans, whether you're whatever, we love you. We embrace you. We welcome you. We don't have to understand or agree or approve of you to love you or welcome you or to show you that God is for you. God loves you. He is just he, he is just beyond mad about you. And he loves you with an everlasting love. If we would have that kind of uh, uh, dangerous love, the love that will change people's love, lives, people will come flocking to the church. But really, our love comes with conditions. Our love says, if you do this, if you act this way, then we love you. If you act this way, then we don't love you. If you have this kind of lifestyle, we don't love you. If we have, if you have this kind of problem, we don't love you. If you have this addiction, we don't love you. Love doesn't mean all the time you let people into your life. It means you embrace them despite the fact whether you agree or not. Love doesn't have to mean agreement. Love means that we embrace you. Love means that we see you as human before we see you as black, before we see you as white. Love means that we see the humanity of the person before anyone else. But Okay, love means that we see the humanity of the person before the depravity of the person. And that is what real love is. And if we can see everybody, everybody, not only as equal, but as human, and not see them as depraved, addicted, whatever, that's where dangerous love, life-transforming love, life-giving love, life-sustaining love uh, will begin. And the Lord wants to give you that kind of love today. If you are interested in knowing more about Christ or uh, knowing more about what I'm talking about, um, um, the Lord wants you to accept, to accept him today. What I mean by accepting him, we usually use these terms and don't explain them. What, what, uh, what I mean when I say salvation, he basically wants to come in and change your life. He wants to come in and show you that dangerous love that I'm talking about. He wants to give you that dangerous joy that I'm talking about. He wants you, he wants to give, to show you how to worship dangerously. He wants to give you, um, show you how to pray dangerous prayers that can move any mountain like it says in Mark. Um, and all you have to do, the Bible says, is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Um, most people pray, pray with people. I generally don't because I believe that God doesn't want to hear my words. In this moment, he wants to hear your words. So just say in your own words how much you need him or whatever's in your heart. And if you need help after that, feel free to message me. 
Um, I'd be happy to help you. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll see you next week, guys. Take care. And remember, dare to be dangerous. Remember, the kingdom suffers violence, and the violent take it by force. If the kingdom is meant to be violent, spiritually violent, we are meant to stand up and take it by force. We don't ask permission. We ask forgiveness. And the Lord so wants his people to stand up and take the kingdom by force with these da- with j- dangerous prayers, dangerous worship, dangerous joy, and dangerous love. Bye guys, I'll see you later. Something about, something about you makes me feel like I'm dangerous for Something about, something, something about you makes me You know, the, there are things that they say we shouldn't do, but the Lord's saying, I need you to be dangerous. I need you to go past the norm to what you think is church and do things that um, are totally new. Not crazy, but God led in and and new and he said be be not afraid because people tell you that you shouldn't do that or that is not god or whatever but he's calling you to be to dare to be dangerous today and he's saying if it's if it's his kind of dangerous not crazy not off the wall i'm talking about dangerous the god kind of dangerous which is God ordained, um, which is God ordained kind of purposeful danger. He's saying He will protect you. He will be with you in that danger. There is, there is nothing that He's purposed you to do that He won't give you the resources for. A lot of people are getting visions are getting resources to do some dangerous things for the kingdom. But they're they're too afraid to step out. The Lord is saying, step out and he will catch you. He's saying, dare to be dangerous. Thank you guys so much. I love Jesus' ministry because what he did was very dangerous in his time. He was he was a, a literal hell raiser. Uh, he just did things that were kingdom minded. He's like I'm a he's like I'm about my father's business. He just hung around with everyone that people said not to hang around with. He just did things. He was very dangerous for the kingdom. So much so that they killed him. But even that was was not dangerous. That was um, the number one part of his plan. He took the keys of death, hell, and the grave. 
and that's because of Jesus' dangerousness, we have life. Because of his blood shed on the cross, we have life. So without God's dangerousness, we, we would be all bound for hell. So thank you, Lord, for being dangerous. Thank you, Lord, for defying the norm. Thank you, Lord, for just just being a, to a total bad butt. I can't say the real word because this is a sermon. <laughs> So, um, so thank you for being, for daring to be dangerous, Jesus. And, and because you dare to be dangerous, we can dare to be dangerous because we're your children and we love you, Lord Jesus, and we worship you. We will pray dangerously. We will worship dangerously. We will have joy dangerously. And we will love dangerously. Thank you, Lord. So much so that it changes every atmosphere around us. Thank you, Lord. So much. <laughs>